So we have these definitions for uh, pursuing the idea of regime diagram for the premix turbulent flames. Um, of course in this process we have assumed uh, somewhere along here that uh, the Schmidt number equals uh, 1. So uh, let us suppose that for uh, scaling purposes um, take the turbulent dissipation as uh, V prime cube divided by the integral length scale um, could only show typically that it is of the order of but let us suppose that we take it is equal to then uh, then putting things together we essentially what you are looking for is uh, an expression for V prime over SL uh, in terms of non-dimensional quantities. So the non-dimensional quantities uh, actually what we are looking for is uh, expressions for V prime over SL in terms of uh, L over LF uh, uh, with, with uh, the non-dimensional quantities involved in there and we should now be able to show that this is equal to Re times uh, L over LF to the minus 1 um, and that is also equal to Karlovitz to the 2 thirds divided by sorry times LF L times L over LF time to the one third. Um, why are we doing this? Because that is what the regime diagram is all about. The regime diagram is one on uh, V prime over SL on the vertical axis plotted against L over LF. What this basically means is that when, when you want to talk about turbulence you talk about it in uh, by, by characterizing in two ways. One what are the length scales involved in the, in the turbulent flow that we are talking about. The other one what is the intensity that is involved okay. So the, these, are, these are two things essentially it is sort of like in a time uh, signal kind of thing what you are talking about is what are the frequencies involved and what are the amplitudes involved right. So these two things essentially indicate that and in both the cases and for both the parameters what you are looking for is to compare these two with their corresponding flame related quantities that means we are saying can we now look at the turbulent length scales in comparison with the flame length scale like the flame thickness right. So are we having typical eddy sizes that are that are bigger than or smaller than the flame thickness right that is on the one side as far as the scales is concerned and as far as the intensity is concerned uh, when you now have a flame that is trying to propagate at a particular speed if the flow that is out there is now fluctuating right at, at a certain intensity um, if, if the fluctuation is very very small that as, as the flame is beginning to propagate it does not really go through any jitter it just. Uh, this is so small that, uh, that the flame can just go through without even realizing that it, it went through a, a, a fluctuation right. Then you do not really have a turbulent flow at all or in other words if you now had significant amount of intensity, fluctu intensity that means the amplitudes are very large right then the flame is going to now go through uh, fluctuations correspondingly. Therefore how, how are these fluctuations the fluctuation in turbulent fluctuation intensity how is it com comparable to the flame speed itself right. So these are the, the, the two things by which we want to compare um, characterize this. So we will we'll now have uh, values thrown in on a log log plot this is actually a, a logarithmic diagram. So we will now look at uh, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3 etc or maybe just one more yes, space for 10 to the 4 and uh, similarly over here could actually look for something like a squarish picture uh, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the 0, 10 to the uh, 1, uh, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3 and so on okay. And uh, what we want to point out here is the relationship between V prime over SL and L, 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 L over LF 
through Reynolds number is one of a inverse relationship right that is this goes this one over that and with a Reynolds number as a coefficient and therefore uh, 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 we would actually like for, for a normal plot it should actually be like a rectangular hyperbola that is forming the relationship between V prime over SL uh, to L over LF for constant Reynolds number but uh, uh, this is actually a log log plot. So in a log log plot this actually shows up as a negative a straight line with a negative slope and in, in uh, this particular um, exercise what we are trying to do is to have for example in this case this involves like the Zeldovich scaling and we are using a Zeldovich uh, number uh, value of about 10 and, and that is something that we have talked we have seen long ago when we are trying to scale the um, premixed flame thickness to find out how much is the reaction zone thickness going to be relative to the preheat zone thickness and so correspondingly uh, we now expect that uh, a, a Reynolds number of 1 a constant Reynolds number of 1 line um, is going to be uh, a straight line in the log log plot with a, with a slope that is inclined downward uh, for R equals 1 and this regime now is essentially what we call as laminar flame. That means with the turbulent Reynolds number defined this way uh, this line corresponds to R equals 1 anything greater than R equals 1 forms this region to the right of and above of this line and anything that is to the left of and bottom below this line is um, laminar right. So that means for turbulent flames we are essentially interested in all of this regime uh, that, is, uh, that is point number 1. Then the next thing that we have to look for is how is V prime over SL related to L over LF uh, through Karlovitz number. So can we now plot constant Karlovitz number lines and the answer is uh, this is actually going as one third of that and uh, therefore in a log log plot it is going to be a straight line with a slope of 1 over 3 all right uh, and, the, and the line is going to go upwards. So we start the start doing this at uh, this point uh, corresponding to 1 over here and uh, now draw a line that is uh, uh, Ka equal to 1 and Karlovitz equal to 1 we now start from this point. So we now have this entire turbulent combustion regime at the moment divided into two parts right one which is having a Karlovitz number less than 1 and another one that where the Karlovitz number greater than 1 and in both the cases the Reynolds number is greater than 1. Within this regime we now want to further um, differentiate between a, a, well you could use actually a straight line a, a continuous straight line this is a horizontal line uh, this is a horizontal line corresponding to V prime over SL equal to 1 that means V prime equal to SL right. So this is a regime where RE greater than 1 K less than 1 but V prime is greater than SL this is a regime where RE is uh, greater than 1 Ka less than 1 and uh, V prime is also less than SL right and finally we want to now look at the situation where the second Karlovitz number is, is uh, greater than 1 right. So we now have a, a, a boundary and that is also going to go the same way because Karlovitz number that this is basically delta, delta squared Karlovitz right. So they are directly related so uh, V prime over SL in terms of uh, Karlovitz delta uh, Ka delta is going to also have a one third relationship for the L over LF all right uh, with simply a different coefficient delta squared. Therefore um, you, you will have the same slope but then it starts at around 10 because we are look, looking at a Zeldovich scaling of 10 and uh, uh, so I mean these, these, these things could be a little bit off this way that way okay but essentially we are getting the picture like, uh, like this depending upon the value of your Zeldovich number 
uh, and this this line corresponds to k a delta equal to 1 therefore this is uh, re therefore you know go back and say re greater than 1 Karlovitz greater than 1 but Karlovitz delta less than 1 and here we now have re greater than 1 k a greater than 1 k a delta well let us just use this space uh, k a delta greater than 1. So that means we now have four regimes that we have marked one based on um, Karlovitz less than 1 but V prime greater than or less than SL okay we have got two and when Karlovitz is greater than 1 we still have Karlovitz delta less than or greater than 1 so that is how uh, we, we are splitting this. So what is the significance of doing it this way um, the answer is we are now going to uh, now call this the wrinkle flamelet wrinkle flamelet regime and we are going to call this the corrugated flamelet regime the, we are going to call this um, thin reaction zone regime or uh, uh, reaction reaction sheet regime you can call it uh, either way so you can say thin reaction zone or uh, reaction sheet regime and this is what this is what you would call as broken uh, flame flamelets regime uh, or, or the well stirred reactor regime it is differently called in different textbooks uh, in this way well so that is kind of uh, interesting so just, just to make, make it a little clearer we could probably uh, use like a different color chalk piece for the four lines that we are talking about that, that, that demarcate these five regions and uh, so why are we the question is why are we calling these what they are right. So now let us think of think about what happens in each of these cases. So uh, the first one is the wrinkle wrinkle flamelet regime and uh, uh, here we are having situation of re greater than 1 k a less than 1 and uh, v prime v prime less than sl so when we say k a is uh, less than 1 uh, and look at what is k a k a is essentially the flame time to the kolmogorov time all right so essentially it's comparing the flame scales with the Kolmogorov scales or essentially what it basically says is we are still looking at the flame to be significantly thinner than the uh, the turbulent scales right so that is what that is what it basically means. So you now have a flame uh, that is let us say marked by uh, two lines that is we will try to do this for quite some time uh, and then the point essentially is we will be able to do this for quite some time and that is that is what I would like to uh, impart here these two lines are essentially this 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 line is like the reaction zone uh, the, the 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 thickness including the thickness of the reaction zone and the dotted line is actually the upstream edge of the preheat zone. So the preheat zone is spanning the thickness corresponding to this distance between these two lines and uh, the thickness of this continuous line itself represents the reaction zone right. So effectively in a one dimensional flame you would have the reaction zone and upstream of it you will have the preheat zone. So the upstream edge of the preheat zone is what is marked by this broken line but we are now talk showing it as curved because what we are basically saying is this is now interacting with an eddy that is going around like this. So it is it is uh, uh, tangential velocity is Vn depending upon the uh, eddy size and uh, 
the, this flame is now propagating uh, locally normal to itself with a flame speed as well right and since you are having a situation where V prime is still less than SL uh, the intensities are significant to make the turbulence felt by the flame unlike in a laminar flow but still not enough to penetrate the flame or do anything more all it does is to basically make the flame wrinkle around the eddy right the flame is too thin and then so the, the whole of the flame is too thin okay uh, we will now progressively get to the point where the eddy sizes are smaller when compared to the flame thickness or uh, the flame is becoming thicker when compared to the eddy sizes whichever way right and then things are going to get a uh, little bit more complicated. So the next regime for example would be the corrugated corrugated flamelet regime where the, the Reynolds number is greater than 1 all right the Karlovitz number is still less than 1 all right but V prime is greater than SL so this means the intensity is now larger than the flame speed so the 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 eddies are now going to make their presence felt on the flame a lot more so what this basically means is the 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 velocity here is going to be large and correspondingly the flame has to give way so that is how the flame always tries to do things right it, it now when the flow is locally large it gives way by inclining itself to the flow such that only a component of the flow direction is balanced by the flame speed right. So what then happens when this now begins to increase is so if you now think about a eddy that is now having a larger Vn and I now have a flame that is interacting with it. It, it, it now actually begins to curl up to encompass that so which, which, which means in fact you should you, you should uh, you could exaggerate this a little bit more uh, by, by saying strictly speaking you could, you could say that means you know the, the, the corrugation in the flame can now house an eddy comfortably right previously we did not have the flame corrugated so much but now you have a corrugation of the order of the eddy size right so that is the reason why it is called a corrugated flame then we now get into the thin flame thin reaction zone uh, or the or the uh, reaction sheet regime so Here Re is greater than 1 and Karlovitz is also greater than 1 and of course V prime is greater than SL we have, we have long passed we have gone past that long back right and, uh, and uh, therefore uh, what we are talking about is uh, Karlovitz is greater than 1 and that means the, the, the turbulence scales are now bigger than the, the uh, the 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 the, third, the 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 turbulent uh, look look at this. If Karlovitz is greater than one, then the flame thickness is now getting to be bigger than the turbulent scales, right? So, what that really means is you're now going to have a a flame that is having a preheat zone starting out like that, but you now have an eddy that is that is big enough to penetrate the, the, the preheat zone and uh, then the preheat zone thickens. Why does the preheat zone thicken is because you now have a turbulent transport of heat and mass. The job of the preheat zone is essentially transport okay where heat from the reaction zone is being transported upstream to the reactants and mass from the reactants is being transported downstream to the to, to the reaction zone right. So you have a heat and mass transport that is happening in the preheat zone which is 
now in addition to the molecular transport that happens because of temperature and concentration gradients is also additionally happening because of the eddy that means this eddy is now taking the reactants and putting it into the free heat zone for the reactions to consume and taking the heat from the preheat zone and bringing it a priori ahead to the reaction zone and heating it up right. So if you want to think about this in a uh, statistical manner it is as if like you had a fairly thick preheat zone the eddy was doing the job of thickening in the preheat zone right. So you now can only talk about a reaction zone that is now trying to give uh, accommodate the uh, the 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 uh, the eddy, but the preheat zone has been breached. That's that's essentially what's going on. Uh, so therefore, that's the reason why we are calling this a a reaction sheet regime. That means all that we can talk about as a characteristic of the original premix laminar flame, uh, the remnants of it is only the reaction zone. The preheat zone is now marred. Right. So effectively, the way we are thinking about this is can I hold on to my laminar uh, knowledge right and that is just beginning to get breached here by the turbulence until then it is okay right and there is a reason why we have been using this uh, there is this term called flamelet all the time and uh, there, there is this basic idea of what is called as laminar flamelets that means you can now think about in these regimes we can still continue to think about the turbulent flame or the turbulent combustion zone as being made of an ensemble of laminar flamelets right. So locally where you have these things satisfied you can now say it is essentially a laminar flame but it is now interacting with an eddy and therefore it is getting curved or corrugated wrinkled, wrinkled or corrugated right. So you can, you can continue to preserve your idea because the original local structure of a one dimensional laminar flame how we extended it from a one dimensional premix, laminar premix flame to let us say for example a Bunsen burner uh, the, the shoulder of the flame there or the base of the flame there or the tip of the flame there in all these things we try to accommodate the one dimensional idea locally the flame is trying to match the flow right or it is shaping itself to match the flow and that happens everywhere still right so you could you could you could, you could hold on to that that means locally if you now uh, look at these gradients you can draw exactly the same pictures that you drew that is the concentrations are now falling down the temperatures is now growing up and all that stuff that structure is there right but here that structure is breached okay except only for the reaction zone and then finally you now get into the WSR or the broken flames. the Wells Chard reactor the w, WSR regime uh, here of course the Reynolds number is greater than 1 of course the Karlovitz is uh, greater than 1 we, we got to go back and point out that we still have Karlovitz delta less than 1 there for the previous case that means the, the eddy sizes are still not big enough to act sorry small enough to breach into the reaction zone but that is no longer the case here. So here we have Karlovitz delta is also greater than 1 right. So in this case what happens is uh, the even the reaction uh, zone is torn apart. So that means you now have the flow getting into the reaction zone and coming back again and locally it can strain the uh, reaction zone and cause local quenching and reignition and so on. So that means you now have the flame torn apart into shreds because of these eddies right. So this is this causes local quenching and reignition events. Let us now talk a little bit about non premix combustion. So non premix turbulent flames I am I'm following Peters here and uh, there is more work that has been done further out in more in, in uh, uh, more recent past but I am not covering that material as far as this is concerned. Now the problem with non premix combustion regimes is um, we do not have a characteristic flame speed here.
right. But instead what we want to actually look at is if you are looking for velocity gradients in the flow and of course turbulent flames will have velocity gradients in the flow. So, uh, so if you are now looking at uh, something like a strain rate, strain rate um, let us say uh, it is given by symbol A and uh, you have like let us say something like dou infinity V dou V infinity by dou Y for the flame um, it is also um, related to the pressure gradient in the flow that is like you can say dp by dy equals uh, rho infinity a squared where a is the uh, strain rate and so if you now have a strain rate then the strain rate actually has a dimensions of uh, time okay so this is meters per second this is meters right so it is sorry strain rate has a dimensions of 1 over time right. So then uh, with, with this we should now be able to come up with a uh, diffusion thickness diffusion thickness uh, LD equal to dA d over a the whole to the half so that is like a meter squared per second divided by 1 over second so the 1 over second gets cancelled you get meter squared per half gsq meter. So now um, we are, we are basically looking for something like a characteristic dimension associated with uh, the, the, the flame in order to be able to compare with the turbulence that is that is what we were doing for the premix flame there it was rather easy to think about uh, a, a time and space relationship through the flame speed but here we did not have a flame speed so we, we are going through this. The next thing that we want to do is uh, we do not want to actually think in terms of physical space. Uh, because in, 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 in diffusion flames uh, the, the mixed fraction actually comes up as a very handy tool and we went through this when we did, when we did diffusion flames you see. So when you, when you have diffusion flames it is one thing to actually get the flame shape in physical space but if you want to actually look at the flame structure you are better off looking at the mixed fraction space because in the mixed fraction space all the concentrations and temperatures are all related to the mixed fraction and if you now supply the local mixed fraction you can find out how the how these things vary right. So in the in the mixture fraction space uh, we can now have a corresponding uh, uh, diffusion thickness that is corresponding to the diffusion thickness that we have defined uh, LD diffusion thickness in the mixture fraction space now is let us suppose we call this delta Z F again the, the subscript F is corresponding to flame here uh, because we are looking at uh, the diffusion thickness around the stoichiometric surface right because you have the flame and then you now have a, a certain length scale associated with the flame that the eddy wants to interact with right. So the in the mixture fraction space it is always about the stoichiometric mixture fraction where the flame is therefore what you are saying uh, what, we are, what we are looking for is the, the conversion from the physical space to the mixture fraction space goes through the modulus of uh, uh, the mixture fraction uh, modulus of the gradient of the mixture fraction at uh, stoichiometric condition uh, times LD. And, uh, we also had the scalar dissipation rate so scalar dissipation rate chi we did design define this and that is twice d grad z mod squared. So obviously we can get an idea now we, we want to try to put these two together. So that means uh, delta Z F the diffusion thickness in mixed diffraction space is chi ST divided by 2A uh, the whole of the half right. Now if you want to just make this a bit simpler. Um, what you can do is you can now 
expand chi s t about chi about uh, uh, chi s t for small values of z and then approximate let us say let us not say or let us say the z is not varying too far out from z s t um, right and then chi depends on z therefore you expand chi um, about chi s t for small values of z that is like a teleseries approach so expanding chi of z for small values of z about chi s t and uh, when you say small values of z that means we are approximating uh, so we can show that delta z of is approximately 2 z t right. So this is effectively the counterpart of uh, counterpart of L f in premix flames. right? and uh, should be basically point out that this is mostly the preheat zone and we did point this out when we were doing diffusion flames if you recall right so when we did the laminar diffusion flames what we pointed out was the Berkshuman assumption was essentially saying that the flame is a sheet along the stoichiometric surface but that was essentially the reaction sheet right so it is sort of like saying in the preheat in the premix flame you know if you now think about only the reaction zone as a sheet but consider the thickness of the preheat zone like the way we have been drawing pictures here right. Then what happens in the in the Berkshuman problem you have a flame that is a sheet which is like a reaction zone and you do have the transport going on that is mixing of fuel an oxidizer and uh, heat all these things are going on outside of this sheet and if you want to think about what happens to the reaction rate the infinite reaction rate uh, assumption is the one that says that the reaction rate is almost infinite here but if you now try to zoom in and then clarify this reaction zone uh, like we would we, we would do in the preheat pre premix uh, flame uh, then we would find that it is essentially the reaction uh, rate that is going to be uh, peaking only at this sheet similar to how we did in premix flames right. So effectively in most of these we have been mainly interested up to here we have been mainly interested in the premix flame regime diagram what is the preheat zone doing relative to the eddies right. So similarly if you are now thinking about a corresponding diffusion thickness for the flame we should be worried about this in the mixture fraction uh, space this which is this. Um, how is that going to actually interact with the eddies and that is like the counterpart of mostly the preheat zone of the premix plane. And here again the, the, the laminar ideas are coming back to, to help us. Now the reaction zone thickness on the other hand. right uh, so this is the one where you have the fuel and oxidizer consumption zones right and we would like to point out that the oxidizer consumption zone is actually quite larger in reality. That is, that is what we are saying is if you now do actual chemistry right the, the, the detailed chemistry for let us say methane or flames or something what you should find is the oxidizer significantly leaks out of the reaction zone to a farther distance outside 
into the field region okay. So keep that in mind and uh, we would like to now call this delta Z R this is the counterpart of L delta that we had in the preheat zone uh, in, in the premix flame sorry uh, and uh, we would now we would now like to relate this to uh, epsilon delta zf that means it's a, it's a fraction of the, uh, the 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 diffusion diffusion thickness now what we know from um, literature on on detail kinetics like or, or diffusion flames uh, um, with, with with detail kinetics is so we'll just take this empirically here so it is seen that uh, so let, let's just call what we wrote here as delta z epsilon delta z epsilon is uh, going with respect to chi st power 1 4 uh, this is actually from 4 step methane air chemistry calculation and then we try to relate the epsilon here to the extinction epsilon so by scaling epsilon with epsilon q at extinction then we can show that epsilon or epsilon q is chi st divided by chi q to the one fourth and therefore I uh, can just write here delta z r divided by delta z f is epsilon q chi st divided by chi q to the one fourth now the reason why we want to do this is this is actually the one that gives you L delta divided by L that is a counterpart in the premix flames that we saw which is what is the length scale corresponding to only the reaction zone thickness uh, sorry L, L delta divided by LF where uh, so as I said this is the counterpart of LF and uh, that is this and this is the counterpart of L delta okay from, from preheat zones. So we are kind of doing something very similar here uh, as, as what we did for the preheat zone so premix flames. So what we want to plot here is a fluctuation amplitude z prime divided by the, the diffusion thickness in mixture fraction space and on the right hand side on the on the x axis or the horizontal axis we want to plot something as a measure of turbulence which is now going to be the scalar dissipation rate at extinction divided by scalar dissipation rate at uh, uh, stoichiometric now strictly speaking we got to actually average this to indicate a forward average uh, in fact this is what is called as a conditional uh, conditional forward average uh, scalar dissipation rate. Let us not worry about what, what, it, what it exactly means for, for the moment we will simply take it as uh, of the order of the same order as the uh, scalar dissipation rate uh, at, at stoichiometric condition and in fact I should also point out what is what is meant by this uh, z prime so uh, z prime is nothing but uh, z uh, uh, what is called as z z double double prime squared uh, tilde to the half double prime essentially indicates a forward averaged fluctuation so this is a 
essentially a power RMS okay so it is a root mean square of the power average fluctuation okay so that is what it means and similarly um, when you now say Z prime ST what we really mean is uh, the root mean square power average fluctuations obtained at the stoichiometric condition right. Uh, Now, if you're uh, so now let's let's put some numbers here. So we can say one or or ten to the ten to the zero, uh, um, ten to the one, ten to the two, etc. There, and then let's say so this is ten to the minus one. We'll start with ten to the minus two on the y-axis, ten to the minus one, uh, ten to the zero. 10 and 10 squared and so on and what we should be interested in is a region that is greater than uh, chi, chi Q by K, chi ST greater than 1 because when you now have a region that is less than 1 this is the extinction chi. So essentially this corresponds to flame extinction right and then uh, what we should be uh, interested in is uh, when you have uh, actually we should show this uh, so uh, we, we have Z prime ST divided by delta ZF going as chi, chi Q over chi ST I, you can see that here um, you, you have a this, this is opposite so you have a minus 1 over 4 uh, in a log log scale so uh, starting from here you now go through an, a line that is like this so this is Z prime uh, in fact you should say Z ST divided by delta ZR uh, equal to 1 and this is slope minus 1 over 4 uh, we are we are taking uh, chi ST tilde as approximately same as chi ST here as I said and uh, then you also have one more situation where you are looking at similar to previously where we had U prime was com comparable to SL and ZST prime is comparable to delta S so that is here so this is uh, uh, ZST prime equal to delta ZF so that now uh, breaks up things into four parts uh, one is uh, so the flame extinction is one region then we have what is called a separated flames. Uh, connected flames and uh, connected reaction zones right so let us let us again explain these things so when you now have uh, so when you now have for example uh, ZST uh, greater than delta F right now what this means is you now have fluctuations that are actually greater than the, the, the delta ZF and delta ZF is actually corresponding to like the preheat zone and this basically means that fluctuations are, are extending uh, to sufficiently lean and rich uh, sides and uh, therefore what this means is that you, you are now taking in taking some amount of so that the fluctuations are now causing some amount of lean side of the flame 
to go to the rich side and vice versa. So this actually begins to now separate the flames because the flames are effectively dictated by the what is near the stoichiometric surface for the reaction zone and if now you have these things going on you will now create intermediate uh, regions of stoichiometric uh, surfaces so the, the original flame is essentially <coughs> broken. So this, this begins to cause um, separated flames so causes the uh, reaction zone to get separated now for uh, ZST less than delta ZF right we do have intense mixing but not enough to cause uh, separation and uh, sometimes you can also get partial premixing. So what this what this means is you can have the reaction zone move around without really getting disconnected but you will now have the preheat zone get, have the sense of fluctuations. So effectively then you do not you do not really have uh, disconnected reaction zones so uh, this is essentially connected flames that is uh, reaction zones are connected. And finally for uh, ZST less than delta ZR this is now beginning to look like fluctuations are still smaller than the uh, reaction zone thickness itself then even the reaction zones uh, uh, I should say here reaction zones are disconnected uh, but here even the or connected. Now uh, what it turns out is actually you can sense these things completely in a jet diffusion flame so if you now think about a jet diffusion flame uh, along its axis then the, the jet diffusion flame axis actually goes through these different regimes as you go along this and come down along here. So you can now see these different regimes exist in a jet diffusion flame corresponding to this. We will stop here and pick up from here some, uh, on some other day.